Welcome back to Stream Leisure, and today we're actually doing a history video, which is interesting because I worked at a point all summer, and I didn't even got a day at the water park, so the day Gate Peter broke down, but basically got a shift in park services in each of the areas of the park, and thankfully uh, eventually I actually considered a restroom zone, so it doesn't count, and I wasn't fully trained on that, but I only got to see it that one time, maybe see it, yeah, so the lead scene at the end of one of the things I did for uh, Son of Sandusky series with Santino. That was the only time I went over to that, which is the day I recorded the Snake River POV. And those two things are related. And we'll get into the real history as well as the history of Snake River Expedition coming up. Four hours working on the swell, four hours slogging in the rain, four hours working to the bell, then four hours till it starts again. So, what is the truth within Snake River Expedition? The truth is that, you know, more fits more of the Frontier Trail style with, you know, the whole like riverboat thing, because you would have boats like that going up, you know, the Ohio to the Mississippi. And they may have been working dull the railroad. And they were known as Hawkeye Man because they, real sailors were staying on the seas, you know, trading between, you know, North America, Europe, going to the Indies. They didn't see them as real sailors. There's you know, a song about this, about Hawkeye just a traditional captain shanty, believed to originate in the southern U.S. in the 19th century. The song made its way into a wire verse and believed to be tied to the string vessel of the Missouri Missouri. And it's very similar to a tune called Johnny Come Down the High Elf. Although it has, the term has been used familiarly in Missouri, but it has been used from coast to coast. So yeah, and since Frontier Town, which is set a few years later, I think at this time it's now like in the same time period as Silver Dollar City, with Maverick and Steel Vengeance, that they would have built, helped build the railroads, you know, doing inland trading, which is mainly the whole backstory of Snake River. So that'd be interesting to hear from, you know, from actual, like, singer crew if they know about that backstory, if they think that kind of, like, holds up. Because we really don't know Trevor Daniels wants to give us his gold and all that, but we'll get into the plot of that later on. So, what is the true, what is the backstory of this ride? So, it actually stretches back to even before the centennial celebrations of Park is where Iron Dragon stands today. Riverboat Cruises opened there in 1961, which is seeing attraction, and within a few years it was already renamed, and that same area there is also where the uh, main Midway Frontier Lift Station, which people took to get over to Frontier Town because Trail and Gemini didn't exist, and again, that the whole back area was swamped pretty much back in those days. It was renamed Western Cruise in 1964. The original ride was a quiet cruise around a lagoon through a you know, pass of America. And, you know, has the same kind of vibes as the Jungle Cruise. And it was, I was a pilot real captain. Didn't have, a, didn't have a track like Snake River. I mean, didn't have a track like uh, Jungle Cruise. They were free floating. But the actual captain actually needed to steer the boat to navigate the waterway. And... Since Iron Dragon was built for 1986, the ride was moved to its cur to the current Snake River spot over by Gemini. And with that, it was renamed it was renamed Paddle Wheel Excursions, which is a name that it kept until its closing. Paddle Wheel Excursions was once again truncated after, you know, with the opening of Top Thrill Dragster. And obviously that's probably isn't much Snake probably follows much of the same way it does now. But with all these world-class snooker brand coasters around and, you know, the tracting lines, no one really wants to go on a literally boat ride anymore. Because of that, they didn't put a lot of effort into keeping it up, so I got trunks stopped working, ridership declined, the season kept getting shorter and shorter every year, prices kept going up to maintain and keep fueling the boats, because they were gas-powered. The well, operating season was, it ended operations for Labor Day 2011, and for the 2012 season, it was announced that Dinosaurs Alive would replace it, so you would go through the queue of Powell Excursions, kind of be like a shop, you know, pay 
get to experience all of the dinosaurs over on Adventure Island, which is where Millennium's turnaround is. Oh, I see over there is also the infamous Shoot the Rapids. Because of that removal, that is one of the reasons why Forbidden Frontier enters through Frontier Trail, because obviously they Shoot the Rapids was taken out at Challenge Park. It was Challenge Park, they moved their Sky Coaster to where Shoot the Rapids was, and that obviously gave us a bit more room to throw a new bridge over, and that was added for the 2019 season to replace Dinosaurs Alive, and so. And that whole, you know, Forbidden Frontier was based off the pre-existing Ghost Town Live attraction at Knott's Berry Farm. And this would be the spark to re-inspire the old Power Wheel excursions. 100 days before the planned May 9, 2020 opening in the start of their Winter Fate Spectacular, Cedar Point announced Snake River Expedition, which would function similar to the old Western Cruise, but guys would help Trapper Dan smuggle gold down the Snake River, but get caught up with bandits in a hilarious adventure. However, due to COVID-19, Snake River and Forbidden Printer did not open in the 2020 season. Boats did not land in the water until September 2020, nine years after Powell Exertions closed. They may have been completed by the time quarantines hit, but I said boats didn't go in until after summer. The ride was announced to open at the sort of Memorial Day weekend, May 20, 2021. However, this was the day, my the worst four hours of my life at Cedar Point. It was very windy, very wet and rainy. My shift started at 7, I was being around there at the usual time, but kind of like after, you know, 10, and drive for opening, kind of was like, too much, and then I, they sent me away at 11, and then the park closed at 2 because the causeway flooded. I was like, like why didn't you just close? He's been getting closed for Hurricane Remnant of Andrea back in 2013, when I was supposed to go there. But it wasn't that bad. The whole game would have been closed, and I wouldn't want to ride it anyway, because it just wasn't in that type of way yet, so, uh... Yeah, shameless plug to F7 Online because John just made a video on Volcano. I'll link a card to that. Stop, you know. So, because of that, it was pushed off to the next day. And I'll operate 11 to 7 during the season until Labor Day. I'm guessing I'll maintain a solar schedule for years to come. So, have you already come an honorary member of Trapper Dan as Hoggai Man Women? Or if you get to ride on over to Frontier Town. Oh, you had an opportunity to ride the previous versions of the attraction. Be sure to tell us your experience in the comments down below. So until next time, comment, like, subscribe, and strike, strike the bell. The hog man is a man for me. He came sailing over from the wild, wild seas. And the hog railroad bully with his hog Steady on the jig with the hog Oh, she wants the hog man. Crow, who's been here since I've been gone? Oh, a big buck sailor with a seabird son. Oh, a hog ship and a hog crew. A hog mate and a skipper too. And a hog